Hey everybody, I'm back with another sculpting tutorial, and this week it's on uh, basic belt sculpting. So this could be used for belts, like I said, or straps, anything like that. So the first thing you want to do is kind of build up the area uh, where you're going to put the belt. In this case, I'm just doing a regular belt around the waist. So I've got the form built up nicely uh, to the f basically the final shape that you'll want. Um, from there, I use an X-Acto knife to start cutting the shape around the whole form. So you'll end up with two lines, of one for the uh, bottom edge of the belt and one for the top edge of the belt. And here I'm just continuing to refine the edge a bit more. Um, it was a little uneven when I did my first pass there. And don't be afraid if you have an exacto blade and a scalpel. Don't be afraid to use either one. But I do prefer to use the scalpel at first when I'm doing the main lines because it's got that longer flat edge. It helps you create a more consistent um, line. When you use the scalpel, that's more for because of its its uh, curve, it presses into the putty in a smaller area, so that's obviously for making smaller lines or cuts. Once you're done creating the edges of the belt, I like to take a, um, well in this case I'm using a uh, round taper clay shaper, um, but any uh, any burnishing tool, you know, with a small rounded tip will be good. But anyways, you go around the whole belt, and I like to kind of press in a little bit, and this creates a bit of a concave shape to the belt, uh, you know, showing where it's tightest towards the center, and... Uh, it gives it a little bit more character and, and kind of gives the idea that it's pressing in. If you want something that's just completely flat, you know, obviously you would just skip this part. Um, but I think it adds a little bit more character to the belt or strap. Um, right here I'm just going back. When you do that, sometimes it can um, soften the edges you cut a bit more. So I'm going ahead and uh, redefining those a bit. You actually can do this part from the very beginning if you want. You can start by kind of lightly pressing in around the uh, whole belt or strap and then take your exacto uh, knife and cut the edge. But sometimes it's a little easier to get a consistent line around the whole figure when you cut it first. All right, so now I'm getting ready to, the, to do the buckle and the strap that pulls through the buckle. A uh, very easy way to do this is to make a thin layer of putty on your thumb and just putty or Fimo. I'm using Fimo in this case, but all of these techniques work just fine with Fimo or putty. I basically do it exactly the same way. So once you get this shape cut, you want a piece that would can essentially rest in the center of the... Uh, the belt or strap, but you want to extend that a little farther to the left or right, depending which direction you need to go. I'm modeling it after, you know, a male belt, so I've got the uh, strap extending out to the left. At least I think that's where you're supposed to put it on. <laughs> I actually wear my belt backwards than most people, so. Uh, but anyways, once you do that, you can get your scalpel and start to cut the uh, shape of the buckle which is just a rectangle or square, you know, 
it's uh, that final shape is up to you. But you just add an you uh, on the left side of your when you're viewing this model, you want to you know make sure that's flat, and then on the right side you add a little cut in there. Um, from there, you can kind of refine the edge of the strap. Uh, you want this piece that you're putting on. It's a good idea to have it be a little bit thicker than the belt also. Uh, and that will make it easier for you to create the shape of the buckle. So, which is what I'm doing right now. After you get that rectangular shape cut, you can start to basically cut into that new rectangle to create an, an outer line. And that outer line is what's defining the buckle. And obviously the buckle is, has to be a little bit larger than the... Uh, belt itself. Once that's done, you can get your small burnishing tool, like I'm using here, and um, you want to press on the strap that's leaving the buckle a little bit to kind of create the idea that it's tucking under the buckle and shooting out. And then on the inside of the buckle, the little square on the internal area, that represents the belt that's uh, slipping in and through the buckle and that needs to have a little bit of a depression on the left and right sides to again look like it's tucking into the buckle and then it can also be helpful to just give a little push on the top and bottom of that square in the buckle and that just helps make it look even that more like it's a separate bit of uh, material that's weaving its way through if you leave it very flat um, at a glance you know, you, someone's mind will read it as, oh, it's a buckle, but it doesn't have that extra bit of detail that makes it look really good. Um, it's very common also that when doing this, you'll you'll end up bumping the, uh, the line that creates the look of the buckle itself. Don't worry about it. Just, you know, go back in with your scalpel and redefine that shape a bit more. Once that's done, you can just take a probe or a needle tool and you can start pushing in a couple little dots down the center of the um, belt or buckle. You, I like to have uh, at least one showing in the area where the buckle is itself on the belt though and then extending out to the uh, part of the belt that's leaving the buckle. But you can have some uh, on the part before the belt goes in the buckle as well. You know, belts have lots of loops, so they fit lots of people. Um, once you do that, the last little bit of flourish you can do is you can cut a very, very small piece of putty or, or uh, clay and just kind of place that in the opposite side of the buckle from where the belt strap is extending out. And that will basically complete the buckle, look at the buckle, so... Thanks again for watching another uh, one of my sculpting tutorials. I hope it was helpful. And as always, if you have any questions, feel free to comment. I'll do my, I will do my best to answer every single one. Um, if you haven't, subscribe to the channel. And you can see more sculpting videos and videos on miniatures. And uh, yeah, give it a thumbs up. All right. Thanks for watching. And uh, yeah, keep sculpting.